beautiful light. Beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Clap those hands to the glory of our God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Oh, that's kind of sad. Lift those voices. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let us pray for the sick and the afflicted. All wise and almighty God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come this morning on the pleading terms of new mercy, thanking you for another Sabbath day's journey, not by our goodness nor by our righteousness, that you touched each of us this morning with your finger of love. Our eyes came open to behold this blessed day, and Master, you gave us a mind to put on our clothes and come back to the house of prayer where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. For you have been better to us than we've been unto ourselves. You blessed us with a roof over our heads. You blessed us with a bed to sleep in. Covers to cover up with. We thank you for the food you blessed us on our tables. You've been better to us than we've been unto ourselves. Lord, you have provided for us our needs. Oh, yes, you have. And Master, we come this morning on the pleading terms of new mercy, praying for these names that are on this prayer list. Lord, you know their condition. You know what they're suffering from. You know where the pain comes and goes. Yes, yes. You're a doctor who have never lost a case. We call on you in behalf of these names that are on this prayer list. Yes, oh, Dr. Jesus, who have never lost a case. Open up the uh, blinded eyes. You gave sight to the those who lost their sight. Yes, Lord, you heal the sick and raise the dead. Yes, Master, we call on you because you have done all. You did all things well. Yes. Lord, you're still with us. Yes. You're still guiding us and you're still directing us. Yes. We call on you in these names behalf. Yes. Some are so sick and facing operations and medicine is not doing any good. Yes. But just one touch. Oh, God, you healed our bodies. Just from one touch, you got us up out of our beds of languishing. Oh, yes, you did. Some of us have called on you when we didn't know what to do. When we didn't have no medicine that was helping us. You touched our bodies. You healed us, Lord. Oh, yes, you did. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We call on you right now. Want to give you thanks for what you're going to do. Yes, oh, Master, we're just thanking you right now. Yes, You've been better to us than we've been unto ourselves. Yes, you brought us from a mighty long yes, way. Yes, when we didn't have a God on our side, yes, you still kept us. Yes, Thank you, Master. Yes, thank you, God. When this life journey comes to an end, we, too, like others, must quit this walk of life. Stick our swords in the sand of time to study war no more over yonder yes, where every day will be Sunday. Sabbath will have no end. You taught us, taught us to pray, your disciples, yes. our Father, Father which art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, yes, Lord. Thy will be done. Yes, Master. In earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us, us this day, day our, our daily, daily bread. bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. We believe that you heard and that you will answer our prayer. Thank you. At this time, we have some special announcement that Sister Elaine, uh, Elaine Boyfield will come now with these announcements. You may be seated. Yeah. In obedience to God, double honor to you, Pastor Scott, to the officers of the church, and to everyone here. My name is Sister Elaine Barfield, right. and I would like to invite you to join us for service during the holidays. Yes. Right. We will have Thanksgiving Day service yes. on November the 23rd at 10 a.m. We will also have Christmas Day service yes. on December the 25th, 2023, at 10 a.m. We will have New Year's Eve or watch meeting service on December 31st at 9.45 p.m. And we will have New Year's Day service January the 1st on the first day of the year at 10 a.m. Amen. those dates on your calendar. We also have service throughout the week that you can join us. Yes, yes. Every Sunday we have Sunday school, yeah. Sunday morning, yeah. and Sunday evening worship service. Yeah. Our Sunday school begins at 9 a.m. Our morning worship service begins at 9.45 a.m. And our evening service is at 4.30 p.m. Yeah. We also have Wednesday night Bible study yes. service. So not only are we receiving the teaching and the preaching on Sunday, but the extra teaching on Wednesday as well at 7 p.m. And then Friday night testimony service. Right, Coming back to tell right. God and witness to others how good God has been to us. Amen. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Yeah. Once again, we want to invite you to join us for services. As our pastor has said, every church, every soul needs a church home. Yes. And you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And there's yeah. just a correction there. At 4.30, 4.45, we usually have Baptist Training Union. Amen. And following that, our evening services. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, specials will come now with their uh, rendition. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Amen. Do you love him? Amen. He's worthy to be Amen. praised Amen. and loved. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing His praise. It Oh, how I love Jesus. 
selection by the choirs, Order My Steps, yes. Yes. led by Sister Elaine Barfield. Yeah.
know that's a marvelous thing when you have God guiding your steps. And on this Christian journey, we sometimes wonder where is God? But one thing about it, he may not come when you want him, but he'll always be on time. And uh, one thing about it, put it in his hand. That problem that I had, I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried. Just got deep involved, turned it over to Jesus. I stopped worrying about it. I turned it over to the Lord. He worked it out. Oh, Jesus got working out. Jesus working out. Jesus working out. He can work it out. Oh, Jesus. That pain that would not move. Prayed in the upper room, the burden that I bore, I was wondering how much more, then I turned it over to Jesus, I stopped worrying about it, I gave it over to the Lord, he worked it out, oh, Jesus, he can work it out, has he worked it out for you? Oh, Jesus, that habit that I had, I just couldn't seem to break. I prayed and I prayed, God, don't let it be too late. So I turned it over to Jesus. I stopped worrying about it. I turned it over to the Lord. He worked it out. Oh, Jesus, he can work it out. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him? Have you ever called on him at midnight? Have you ever called on him when you was driving down the street? It seems like things just wasn't working out for you. You tried to call friends and you tried to call loved ones. But they didn't have an answer for you. Finally, you say, Lord, I don't know what to do. Just turn it over to him. Just turn it over to him. He can work it out. He worked it out. He worked it out. I know fact. He worked it out. He can work it out. Jesus can work it out. Try it. Jesus can work it out. Not to try it. Jesus can work it out. That problem that I had, I, had. I just couldn't seem to solve. To I tried and I tried. I just got deep involved. But I turned it over to Jesus. Jesus. I stopped worrying about it. about it. I turned it over to the Lord. He worked it out. Oh. Work it out. Jesus can work it out. Oh Jesus. Jesus can work it out. He can work it out. Jesus can work it out. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Yes. Have you tried him? Yes. 
31st chapter verses 32 through 34. Right. 31st chapter verse 32 through 34. The Bible says here not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. which my covenant they break. Mm -hmm. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts yes, yes. and write it in their hearts yes. my Lord, my Lord. and will be their God and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The subject this morning is we had and some have a heart problem. Mm -hmm. The subject is heart problem. Heart, heart, heart. The cure for heart problems. Yeah, right. a cure. <laughs> the prophet Jeremiah, you may be seated, you may turn those fans off. The prophet Jeremiah spoke some very troubling words in saying that the heart mm -hmm. is deceitful above all things yes. Yes. and desperately wicked. Who can, who can know it? Yes. You can find that in Jeremiah the 12th chapter and verse 9. King David, a man after God's own heart, cried out to the Lord God after committing adultery with Bathsheba and having her husband killed. He cried out in the 51st number of the Psalms, yes. creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He starts this psalm 50, no, 51st number, this prayerful psalm confessing that he was in need of God's mercy. Yes. Have mercy upon me, O oh God, oh, yeah. Yeah. according to thy loving kindness, yeah. Yeah. according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Yeah. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Mm -hmm. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Yes. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Yes. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, 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 I was, I was shapen in iniquity, yeah. and in sin did my mother conceive all right, all right. me. So, so regardless, regardless of how clean you are in your own sight, right. how good you may feel,
seal you think you are mm -hmm. without being washed in the precious blood of Jesus, yes. Yes. your heart is deceitful and wicked. Yes. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. The Apostle Paul says in Romans, the seventh chapter, beginning with the 14th verse through the 19th fall, we know that uh, the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold yes. under sin. Yes. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I, uh, I would that I, uh, that do I not. Yes. But what I hate, yes. that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin yeah, yeah. that dwelleth in me. Yes. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Yes. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Yeah. Come on, sir. Come on. For the good that I would, uh -huh. I do not. Uh -huh. But the evil which I would, not that I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, from the cradle, from the cradle, uh -huh. our parents <laughs> began to teach us right from wrong. Yeah. We know to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. yes. We know that. Amen. But we end up by choosing doing the wrong thing. Yeah. We are taught, we're warned, we're admonished, yes. and we are encouraged to do the right thing. Yes. But we choose to do the bad thing. We choose to be displeasing yes. Yes. Uh, before man and God, yes. Yes. before God and man. Yes. We choose to do sinful things before God and to and, and by and to our brothers and sisters. It, it's, it's in our human DNA right. Right. to be bad, to do yes. wrong. It's, it's in our flesh yeah. to do bad. We're, we're sinners from birth. We, we, yeah. We're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Yeah. Yes. The wisest man who ever lived, King Solomon, is recorded by saying in Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, verse 20, in the King James Version, for there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Right. Yes, regardless how good you may think you are, yes. you're still a sinner. Right. Oh, I don't hear you over here. The Holman Christian Standard Bible says, there is certainly no righteous man on the earth who does good and never sins. Right. Uh, the contemporary English version uh, says, no one in this world always do right. It is an inevitable human fact that we are all children of Adam and Eve. We are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We all have a human heart problem. We're born with a human heart problem. Man can work on humans' uh, hearts. He can operate and replace uh, one heart with another heart. But he cannot create a new heart no, no, no. of being clean and pure. He, right. he, he, he can operate on the heart and put valves in it. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to make it yeah. new again and help it beat right. And 
and replace the poorly functioning uh, heart uh, valves with a upgrade, healthy heart. But you can't replace it with a created heart of cleanliness. We got a, we got a problem. Humans got a problem. Don't sit there and think you don't have a problem. You, we had, once had a problem, and some still do have a problem. Is that right? Yes. Come on, right. I'm a pastor. Yes, sir. But I had a I had a heart heart problem. Amen. All right. But one thing that man can never operate on or fix is the heart where Jesus says in St. Matthew the 15th chapter verses 19 through 24, out of the heart. Proceed evil thoughts, mm -hmm. murders and adulteries, right, right. fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. Yeah. Yeah. These are the things which defile a man. Yeah. Yeah. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Oh, right. No, no, no soap. No. Black drunk. <laughs> Cast off. Uh, uh, heretical humanism. All right, all right. That means that you set yourself apart. Yeah. Can cleanse or make a deceitful, wicked heart anew. All right, all right. You just can't clean a dirty heart right. of evil thoughts and wicked imagination. Yeah. You can't do it. We've tried it. Right. That's why some fail every year. When they, at the new year, uh, promises themselves that they're going to do right. Yeah. Yeah. Go to the gym. Oh, wow. Slim down. Start going to Bible study. Uh -huh. But give them two or three weeks. they right back where they were. Right. Because they can't do it themselves. Amen. We need help. Amen. No laxative. No soap product. No Amen. can cleanse a heart of evil thoughts and right. murders and adultery and fornication right. and theft and being a false witness, right. lying on somebody or blasphemies. No, 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 no soap or la laxatives no. can cleanse those from our heart. Our heart needs another spiritual cleansing. Right. Right. Cleanser. Right. Yeah. The only way that a deceitful, wicked heart can be cleansed is by doing what Jesus told Nicodemus. And that is, you must be. There's no way, ifs, ands, or buts about it. You got to be, you must be born again. The sin in your heart has caused and will cause death. Yes. Yes. The day yeah. that thou eatest thereof, Adam, yeah. you shall surely die. Yeah. 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 It's been passed on down through generations. Right. Right. We are the sons and daughters of Adam. All right. We live and we die. Yeah. What is so good about being born again is that you don't do anything, you just don't do anything but believe mm -hmm. right. on the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a rich young ruler who came to Jesus and says, good master, uh -huh. what must I do to be saved? All right. What can I do? Can I? Yeah. Come on. So yeah. Jesus gave him the spiritual litany test of the law. You, Treat uh, your parents right and right. do right, mm -hmm. and etc. etc. You say, All these things have I done for my youth up? You say, One thing you lack like is yeah. just one thing, yes. right. not a multitude of things. He said, What good things can I do? He said, Just one thing, uh -huh. sell all that you have, right. sell yeah. what you got, mm -hmm. give it to the poor. Yeah. Come, follow me, take up your cross and follow me. And the Bible says, after he had heard that, he walked away sad. Yeah. Oh, 
because he cherished those temporary riches that he had more than eternal treasures in heaven. Nothing you can do to be saved. God have already fixed it for you to be cleansed. That's our problem. We look at one another and say, I'm not doing that. I'm better than this. And we ostracize ourselves thinking that we're so holy. But you got to look in the mirror twice. Because there's something that you're doing that's displeasing God. When, when, when they brought the woman who was caught in adultery, where was the man? Bringing that woman and bringing her to Jesus and uh, wake him up, wake him up and saying, good master, we, we caught this woman in adultery. The law says, Moses said, she should be stoned. What do you say? The Bible says Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they kept insinuating and so to speak, battering Christ. What should we do now? Moses said she should be stoned. Now what do you say? Jesus, we see him raising it up and uh, looking, I believe, at him and saying, you who don't have any sin, uh -huh. you cast the first stone. You threw the first stone. Uh -huh. He didn't stand there and looking to see anything. He stood back down uh -huh. and continued to write on the ground. Uh -huh. And then he stood uh -huh. with their stones in their hand, the yeah. oldest, yeah. yeah. that old men. Middle men, yeah. all of them. Yeah. Old man was too old to do something, but he had a stone in his hand. Right. As, he, as they start thinking about all them sins he had, oh, wow. the Bible says from the oldest, because yeah. he must have had a long list of what he had done wrong. Right. Drop their stones yeah. from the oldest to the youngest oh, and walked away. Realized that they had done wrong. Yeah. And but they did not realize the sin problem they had. And that was the main man right there before them right. could right. cure that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you could be right there. You could be right in the church and hear the word right. and don't believe. Yeah. Right. The very cure you need. You don't believe. All right. All right. All right. Drop this stone. Yeah. Yeah. Walked away. Yeah. Jesus raised up and asked her, Woman, where are your accusers? She said, She said, There's none, Lord. There's nobody. He says, Neither do I, neither do I. Here's God in the flesh, the Messiah, the Savior of the world saying, neither do I hold that against you. You're forgiven. When the Lord forgives you, you're forgiven. He said, go and sin no more. There, all those walked away still in their sin. They all could have been forgiven. Oh, all we need to do is believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The late brother Andrew Anderson would repeat that over and over. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Found in Acts, the 16th chapter. Just to come fix this for me. We are just in this uh, lifestyle now where this generation feels that they appear in their own eyesight. The Bible speaks about that right now. How this generation, they can't find anything wrong with what they're doing. Why? Because they stopped going to church. Parents now used to take their children to church. Now they let them decide whether they're going to church or not. By your belief, mm -hmm. uh -huh. God does miraculous things in your heart. Yes. He cleanses 
your heart by using the blood of Christ yeah. that was shed on Calvary. Amen. Yes, he, he, he uses the blood of Jesus that he shed on Calvary for your sins and my sins All right. All right. to wash your heart to cleanse, yes. to clean. You will never have a good heart. You'll never have a good heart if you don't believe. Yeah. All right, yes. all right. Don't believe. God looks at the heart. Yeah. Yes, he does. Who should you believe in? All right. This question is answered by believing in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. the Messiah, mm -hmm. yeah. God with us. Yeah. He's with us through his Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. You will never be washed from a deceitful heart if you don't believe in Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. True. You will never have a pleasing peaceful heart right. before God if you don't have belief in Jesus. All right. That's right. You cannot please God without believing and having faith in Him. Amen. God is the way. Yes, is. Faith in God is the way. Yes. You, you, you can't live in this life uh, peacefully. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have money. You can have clothes. You can have a home. Uh -huh. You can have friends, but if you don't have Jesus, right. you're missing the best friend. Right. You're, best, you're missing the best psychologist, That's the right. best psychiatrist. You're missing the best social person that you can have in your life. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. You cannot achieve a, a good heart, nor a clean heart without Jesus Christ. Right. You can do miraculous things, yeah. but when that time comes to an end, yeah. mm -hmm. your heart will not be satisfied right. without the Lord. Yeah. You cannot live a righteous life without Jesus Christ. I don't care how much you say, I don't do this and I don't do that. The do's and don'ts of life do not make you righteous. Uh, what makes you righteous is belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says Abraham believed and God imputed that. He counted that as righteousness. When we live in Christ Jesus and we walk by faith. He is full of grace yes. and truth to forgive us and wash us in his blood that cleanses all unrighteousness. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's a great thing with Jesus because he brought grace and truth. He cleanses our heart by his blood, but we're still sinners. But the grace, the great part about it, he is full of grace and truth. Amen. That's the difference Amen. between the law and God and Jesus. Amen. He brought grace. Yes. Paul says, I went to him three times. Amen. I got a thorn in my flesh. I, I, it's, it's, it's bothering me. Yes. And the answer came back, my grace. He's full of grace. Yes. How many times, Lord, should I forgive my brother? Seven times Peter asked Jesus. Jesus said, no, 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 Peter. Grace is talking now. He said, not only seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven. Forgive, that's grace. How many times have you gone to God for the same time, same thing, and you ask him to forgive you? And by his blood, he washes you because he forgives you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. It is our propitiation. Yes, 
Talking about Jesus. He is our in between. He is our go between. He's our intermediate. Yes. He justifies us before God. The Father. Nothing else can justify us. I don't care how you cleanse your mind. Uh, humor. Uh, humor. Uh, the heretical kind of thinking and humanism and etc. You can't cleanse your mind. You can't go uh, by yourself and live and think you'll be clean. You're still dirty wherever you are. You're born of a woman. That's the only way you can be born. Right. I don't care about all these, what they're doing out uh, creating. It ain't going to last. Because it's still from the seed of a man. And he's dirty. He's passing on the genetics of Adam. Right. To be born again means to be born by the water and of the spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. The Lord does all the boiling. Mm -hmm. yes. he, he borns us by our belief. Uh -huh. yes. You will never be born again Unless you believe. All right. Yes. All right. You'll never have a clean heart unless you believe in Jesus. You'll never be righteous before God unless you have Jesus. The only way you can have him is believe. It costs you nothing to be saved. But believe. Thank you, it costs you nothing to be cleansed All right. and have a clean heart yes. before God, but belief yes. in Jesus. Yeah. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes. It costs him all yes. Jesus, yes. God's yes. only begotten Son. Yes. That was what he gave. Christmas is coming, but nothing supersedes for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. No gift. Thanksgiving is coming, but no thanks can supersede us by praising him for what God gave to us for salvation. I don't care how many turkeys you eat, how many turkeys you give, nothing supersedes thanking God for Jesus. He gave his life for me and you to be born again. It costs you nothing. It costs you nothing. It is, it is absolutely imperative, necessary. For all of us to be born again to be saved. Mm -hmm. Yes, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes. The Lord will put his law in our hearts. Yes. He will put his law in our hearts. Yes. Yes. When you have Christ in your heart, mm -hmm. because Christ is the word. Yes. Oh, you don't yes. hear what I'm saying. Yes. You don't hear what I'm saying. Yes. Without Christ, you have no power. Right. You have no law to hold you and to keep you in righteousness. Right. Genesis, the sixth chapter, verse five through eight says, and God saw that every, that the wickedness of man uh, man's ways, let me begin this again, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, yeah, yeah. and that every imagination yeah. of the thoughts of his heart was only evil right. continually. Right. Did you hear that? Yeah. Only evil continually. Yeah. That means constant. Right. Right. No good thoughts, yeah. no righteous thoughts. Yeah. Just continually evil. Yes. And it repented the Lord that he had made man yes. on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. Yes. 
Some people don't realize that God got a heart. Yeah. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fire of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made man. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The greatest problem that man had was that it repented God. That he had made created man because every imagination mm -hmm. of the thoughts mm -hmm. of his heart was only not just evil but only wow. yes. evil continually okay. Genesis the 6th chapter verse 8 says but Noah found grace uh -huh. in the eyes of the Lord yes. Noah his wife his three sons and their wives were not destroyed during the worldwide flood because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. God, through Genesis, the uh, ninth chapter, uh, re, uh, renewed. Now, let me just pause there and say, Noah uh, was a righteous man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In his generation, yes. nobody could point a finger and say Noah was an adulterer. Right. Nobody in his generation could point a finger that he was an adulterer, or he was a thief, or he was a liar. He was uh, perfect in his generation. Right. 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 Moving past now the flood, God throughout Genesis. The ninth chapter renewed his covenant with Noah mm -hmm. and his sons. Listen to chapter 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah mm -hmm. and his sons and, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now he's renewing this with Noah yeah. after he had destroyed the world. Wow. He told Adam it in the beginning, yeah. but the world is destroyed now. So he's renewing his, God don't change. That's what it's saying. He means for us to renew, multiply, and replenish. Now Genesis the ninth chapter, all throughout, read Genesis the ninth chapter. God, he renews his covenant. He's a covenant God. And I, behold, I, I established my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every lie, living creature that is with you, of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth, with your, uh, with you from all uh, that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Uh -huh. Now Genesis the ninth chapter verse eleven says, and bear with me now, and I will establish my covenant. With you all throughout the night chapter. He's, he's a covenant God. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there uh, any more be flood to destroy the earth. All through out this chapter. God established or establishes his covenants uh -huh. with man. Right. God does not lie. No. We still see the rainbow right. in the sky. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That means God is truth. Yes. God does yeah. not uh, break his covenant no, with anybody. No. Now let's fast forward. Come on with me. Come on with me. Right. To Exodus, the 19th chapter. Where the Lord God established his covenant with the children of Israel yeah. on Mount Sinai. Listen All right. uh, to Exodus 9 chapter verses 3 through 8. And Moses went up yeah. unto God and the Lord called unto him yeah. out of the mountain saying, Thus saith, thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob uh -huh. and to every children of Israel, uh -huh. 
you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which the Lord shall speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people of uh, people and lay and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Yeah. And, and, and the people, like when I take people into church, I say, oh, are you willing to be ruled and governed by the rules and regulations of God's church? And they stand there and say, I do. Now, this covenant that the Lord is making with Israel with Jacob is a marital covenant. All right. Yes. It's a solemn covenant. Yes. yes. Now, the Bible says in Exodus 19 chapter, the very eighth verse says, and all the peoples answered together and said, all that the Lord hath Spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. All that the Lord said when the Lord bring us out and he hears our prayers, we make statements, I'm going to serve the Lord until the day I die. Yes. Oh, I'm going to be witnesses to God. Keep that in mind. All that the Lord said, we will do. This is a, a, a marital vow. This is between God and his people that he had brought out of Egypt. He had chosen them. He had told Abraham that they was going to suffer 400 years right. in bondage. Right. He had shown Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the land, but he didn't give it to them. Right, 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 right. Covenant is a solemn agreement. Uh -huh. yeah. All that the Lord said, we will do. But, but let's fast forward. Uh -huh. All right, all right. 25 to 30 years later yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. to Judges, the second chapter, verses 1 and 2. And here, the breaking of the covenant. Mm -hmm. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal uh, all right. to Bosham and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your father. Right, right. I kept my word. Right, right. 400 years passed. Many years passed. But I kept my word yes, yes. to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right. and Israel. Yes. I broke you into the promised land. Right. Uh, and, and, and I said, I will never break my covenant with you. The Lord is talking through this 
this angel and, and you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Right. You shall throw down their altars. Yes. All right. But you, sh but you have not obeyed my voice. My now listen to this. But mm -hmm. the Lord is saying to His people, yeah. Yeah. Why? Have you done this? The heart of God is asking. Heart is hurt. Why have you not obeyed my voice? You made a league with the ones that I told you not to make a league with. Why are you associating with the world? I brought you out of the world. You're still trying to be like the world. You tried to dress like the world. You tried to look like the world. I brought you out. I answered your prayers. Why? Read for yourself. Why have you done this? Why have you done this? My late pastor preached a message. Why do you do me like you do me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For 400 years, Israel, for 400 years, Israel, not the Lord God, but Israel was constantly in and out of a re the relationship with God. In and out of the covenant uh, that uh, she had promised mm -hmm. to the Lord all that the Lord said we will do. Uh -huh. right. it, it is the same Goma like spirit mm -hmm. yes. who married Hosea <laughs> yes, being played out mm -hmm. in the history of Israel. Oh, this is all that the Lord said, we will do. Yes. But they disobeyed right, God. Right. Yes. Seven hundred years later, mm -hmm. we hear the Lord speaking through the prophet Jeremiah mm -hmm. in chapter 31, 33 through 34. Mm -hmm. But this shall be the covenant uh -huh. that I will make with the house of Israel. Yeah. It's still in the makings now. Yeah. It's still in the makings. Yeah. He's made a covenant with us, yeah. but he's still in the makings with Israel. Yeah. Yeah. After this has been so many years ago, right. over 2,500 years ago, right. after those days, God keeps his covenant. Yeah. 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 He don't break his word. The Bible says, after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it uh, in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his Brother, saying, Know the Lord, yes, right. mm -hmm. for they shall all know me yeah. from the least of them unto the greatest of them, yes, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will remember their sin no more. Yes. As I come to the close of this Guide message, Guide as the Bible prophetic word is still in
progress. All right. As I come to the close of this message, mm -hmm. the Lord. one thing I can say you must be born again. Yes. You will never experience this new covenant without being born again. You will never experience being washed in the blood of Christ. Right. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Without being born again. I, I just want to leave on record my testimony. I hate a church. I told you this story. I know it. It seems like it's being redundantly told. And I was taken to church by my mother. All right, all right. I hated being in the choir stand and etc. and etc. But one night, as I was lying in my little bed with my kitten at the foot of the bed. She read the story of this man named Jesus. All right, all right. Who wore a crown of thorns on his head. Lonely Jesus, I could see him walking with a crown of thorns on his head by himself. With his head bleeding his, in the, only a, something around his waist, I could see it. As she read the scriptures, I could see him doing this for me. Yes. All right, all right. And as I, I uh, laid there and the tears start coming down my face, mm -hmm. I promised that when Sunday came, I was going to join church. All right, all right. They had been trying to get me in church, but this time, when I heard the story of how this man was wearing these, these crowns, this crown of thorns on his head, right. and how he was being beaten, and right. how he was being uh, ostracized for me, yes, sir. Yes. I said, surely, right. if this man can do this for me, yes. I can surely get in the church. Yes. That Sunday, <laughs> hallelujah, uh -huh. I went to church, I went to church. I was sitting on the front row and Dr. Wells opened the doors of the church. And the devil got in me and uh, I used to have my little way. I was a very little bodacious fellow. And I was going to get up and go and get out of there because I knew the devil knew what I was going to do. And as I was attempting to get up and go out, as he held his hands opened toward the church, I was in the process of getting up, getting out of there. I was on the front row. All right. This little lady, look, had a white on all women that time, and constantly wore their white every day, every Sunday. She stood there, little mother said, go back, sit down, boy. <laughs> sit down. Uh -huh, all right. Something in her voice, the Holy Ghost uh -huh. was in her voice. Yeah. God was in her voice. Yes. Overpowering that devil spirit that was all right, all right. and I obeyed. All right. Dr. Wells continued to open the doors of the church and the next thing I found myself <laughs> I was in front of the church sitting down ready to be taken into right, the church. All right. God knew my heart. Yes. Yes. God was working on my heart. Yes. He had worked on my heart right. when I heard about how Jesus Born a crown of thorns. Yeah, yeah. He started working on my heart. And I believed. All right, all right. Yes. That's what got me up. Yes. 
I believe and came up. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. Yeah. Dr. Wells took me in the church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh -huh. He took me in the church that day, and his assistant uh, pastor was not there. Usually, he baptized with his assist assistant pastor, uh -huh. but he was not there. So he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to baptize you myself. All right. All I'm right. going to take you in the water. Yeah, yeah. All right. I was a little fella about five or six years old. And uh, a little older maybe. And, but I remember the baptism. Yeah. All right. And at three o'clock, they got me dressed. And he asked me when I was down in the water, in the pool, he said, can you, what, what if I slip? Uh -huh. Who can save you? Right. I said, Jesus. Yeah. He said, you believe that? I said, yes, I do. Yeah. Now, I couldn't swim. Yeah. But as he was baptizing me in the name of the Father, uh -huh. in the name of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, yeah. I went down in the water looking for Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Lord. I went down. I was buried in the liquid grave. But I came up believing yes. that Jesus, yes. Yes, sir. but that wasn't all. all right. yes. Being born of the water yes. and of the spirit, yes. I wanted to feel the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right. Yet the spirit was working with me. Yes. And I, I continued to pray and look for the Holy Spirit. I would go to church and I saw other young people. They were rejoicing in the Holy Ghost. Right. And I would sit in the church sometimes and I would laugh at them. Mm. But then it came to me right. that it's not funny. All right. All right. To make a long story short, my mother, before she went to work, she worked from 4 to 12 o'clock in the day, at day, in the daytime. They call it mids. And before she went to work one uh, day, uh -huh. she said, Maurice, after I had got through pouting, I wanted to be like Johnny. He wore nice shoes and uh -huh, right. nice clothes. And I said, I want to have nice shoes like Johnny. Mm. She called me and said, now Maurice, you know where you're getting your clothes from. Right. But you don't know where Johnny's getting his clothes from. Right. And she, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, why don't let's go to the altar? All right. Mm. And let's go and pray. So I stopped my little attitude. Mm -hmm. And we went to our little altar that was in our living room. All right. All right. All right. And she began to instruct me to lift my hands up and put my mind on the Lord. All right, all right. And whatever, whoever comes to your mind, keep your mind on Him. Yes. Yes. And I began to pray in the name of Lord Jesus. Lord. I ask Him to forgive me yes. of all of my trespasses. Right. And when I came to myself, right. yeah, I, I, when I came to myself, uh -huh. it felt like a, a whole ton of bricks right. had fallen. Yeah. That's all I can right. say is like, a ton of bricks like fell off of my heart. Right. I felt light. Yes. I couldn't wait to get to church and say, I got the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. The spirit of the Lord, yes, hallelujah, yes, had freed me from my sin. Yes. Had freed me. I said, if you save me, yes. I serve you until right. the day I die. Yes. I felt like new. Yes. Oh, you don't know what I'm trying to say. I felt new and I felt light. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I was filled with the new birth. I, my eyes looked different. I saw things different. Sure, I'm a, I was a sinner, but I was saved by grace. What does that mean? I sinned, but I, I had the power of the Lord God on my heart. He let me know when I was sinning. I didn't sin ignorantly, but I knew when I was sinning. And he let me know I was sinning. And he gave me an opportunity to come to God in the name of Jesus. 
and by his grace, he washed me. Yeah. And I can look back and say, the things that I used to do, I don't do anymore. He brought back how many times beat up. Uh, you should forgive your brother 70 times. It's more than just seven times. 70 times seven. God has forgiven me. And I'm not what I used to be. I'm striving to be like him. I thank God for a new heart. Oh, he, he born me this heart. I was born of the water and of the spirit. What about you? Do you know him? Have you felt his power? Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the living water. Do you know it? You put food on the table. Talk to somebody a long way. You've a many prayers. Oh, when the saints go on.